multivariable calculus. We're looking at 12.5 day one and uh, we're going to be looking at equations of lines and equations of planes in space in 3D. So consider a line in space that passes through a given point and this given point would be right here P sub zero uh, and uh, we'd have uh, X naught, Y naught, Z naught and uh, we have this line, it's in green, you can see right here, but uh, this line would be parallel to a given vector, and this vector would be down here. This would be vector V, uh, and it would be in blue. Uh, a, B, C would be the coordinates uh, or in component form of this uh, vector. And what we're really seeing is, take a look right here, x would equal, if we wanted to get equations for uh, this line in space, it would be x naught plus a t, y naught plus b t, z naught plus c t. Notice that your x coordinate here and your x component of your vector would get added together, but it would be times t. Now that t can seem very strange. This is really like in a parametric form. And I think sometimes kids look at this and they'll almost say, well, I can memorize this, I suppose, but why is this true? Why would this really be the equation of a line? Well, what we can do, let me explain it this way. I hope it's going to make some sense. Uh, let's just say that you have a vector x naught, y naught, z naught and uh, that would look like this vector right here and then uh, remember if we are parallel if this line is parallel to vector v then uh, we can slide vector v up so I'm going to change the color to really make it uh, dramatic here to maybe make this bold red and we can make this bold red right up in here too. And I guess what I'm really saying is we could say we could add any multiple t times this vector. And, uh, you know, as we do this, this could double the length of vector v. It could triple the length. It could even go in a negative direction. Uh, but what are we seeing? This vector right here is added. We'd have head to tail, what we talked about earlier. Our end result would be right here. So we could lengthen that vector v however long we'd like by multiplying it by t. It could get way, way, way longer, way shorter. It could change direction. And that's why we can now find a new coordinate on this line. So what are we seeing? We're always going to have our initial point, x naught, y naught, z naught. And we're going to add to that a multiple of this direction vector. Uh, that's that t. It's like a scalar multiple. So let's take a look at example one. Write the equation of the line that passes through negative 2, 0, and 4. Well, that's your beginning point. That's x naught, y naught, z naught. And it's parallel to this vector. This would be like A, B, and C. Uh, so they're saying, hey, would you write the equation of that line? Well, x would equal, well, we need our x naught. That's negative 2 plus, well, then we need a t. So that's going to be 2t. We'd have y. Well, we need y naught. That's this 0. Plus, now we need b t. You know, b t, b is right here. We'd have 4t. And then we'd have z. z is going to be z naught. Well, z naught is right here. That's a 4. And then we could say plus a ct. Well, that's plus a negative 2t. So, you know, that's where that's coming into play. So that's part A. That's your equation. Uh, but then they'd want you to name two other points on that line. Well, tell you what, we could let t equal 1. We could let t equal 1, and x would be, if we're looking right up in here, negative 2 plus 2 times 1, well, that's a 0. Uh, plug in a 1, 0 plus 4 times 1, that's just a 4. Plug in a 1 for t right here, 4 minus 2 times 1, 
Well, that's 4 minus 2, that's a 2. So we'd have a 0, 4, 2. You know what, you could let t equal 2, but I guess I just want to let you know t could be negative also. Uh, you know, 2 times negative 1, it's negative 2 plus negative 2, you'd have x equals negative 4. Uh, 0 plus 4 times negative 1, that's a negative 4. Uh, and negative 2 times uh, a negative 1 would be a plus 2. 4 plus 2 would be a 6. So uh, that's really showing that uh, you can go in the opposite direction. Uh, you know, your t could, uh, you know, help you go, as we saw up above, in an opposite direction of your uh, vector. When you are multiplying by a negative, you go in that opposite direction. Uh, if this vector is used to describe the direction of the line, A, B, C are called the direction numbers of L. And then uh, finally, we can also have what's known as symmetric equations right here of a line in space. And notice that there's no T. And that can look rather strange at first. Uh, you can think, well, my goodness, uh, how do we do that? How, how can we get this to work out? Well, it's actually pretty quickly. We can come up here and solve for t. What if we solve for t? We'd have x minus x naught would equal a t. We'd have y minus y naught would equal b t. We'd have z minus z naught would equal c t. And then how about we just divide by t? I mean, divide by a. I am so sorry. You know, let's get t alone. Here, let's divide by b. What are we doing? We're solving for t. Here, for our last one, we divide by c. And these t values are all going to be the same. What are we saying then? That these three quantities must be equal. Well, that's what we're seeing right here. This is known as the symmetric equation of the line. The wonderful thing is you don't have a T in it. <coughs> so, as we are looking right here at number 2, it says write the equation of the line that passes through these two points. Uh, let's take a look here. We could very quickly go either with a symmetric or with a... Uh, uh, you know, parametric form like we saw up above. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Uh, but let's take a look at P and Q. Here we can have our uh, beginning, and here we have our end. And we could go either way, honestly. Uh, but we'd like to have a direction. And, you know, if this is our beginning, we have x naught, y naught, z naught. Uh, but if I'd like to get our direction numbers. If I'd like to find our direction numbers and more or less, uh, you know, just get that direction vector, we have to do end minus beginning. That's 1 minus negative 3. Uh, we'll have end minus beginning here, negative 1 minus 2. And finally, we'll have 4 minus uh, negative 3. Uh, so what are we seeing? Uh, this is going to be, you know, 1 plus 3, which is a 4. Uh, this is negative 3, and uh, this is going to be a 7. This really is our direction numbers, and we have this nicely, nicely written out. Uh, so listen, we could, when they say write the equation of the line, they did not specify uh, which form we would write out. You honestly could write out either one of these. Uh, and it's all going to be equivalent. Parametric does show up a lot, uh, mainly because you can generate more points easily, very easily. So we can see right here that x would be a 3 plus 4t. We could have y is equal to a, well, we need our y naught. Our y naught would be a 2. And uh, then we'd have a minus 3t because that's going to be our b right here. And then our z would be, well, negative 3. And our c, you can see, would be a 7. So we'd go 7t. When they'd say write the equation of the line, we could have written it this way. Of course, you are more than welcome to also write it out symmetrically. 
Uh, they're saying, at what point does the line intersect the xy plane, however? For part b, uh, if we were in the xy plane, I hope you know that this is where z equals 0. So we're going to let z equal 0. And when we let z equal 0, we've got uh, z equals negative 3 plus 7t. So 0 would be negative 3 plus 7t. So then uh, 7t would equal 3, and t would be 3 sevenths. Well, the thing is, x would be 3 plus 4t. So x is 3 plus 4 times 3 sevenths. Well, this is 12 sevenths. Plus, well, here if we were to get a common denominator, that's 21 sevenths. And uh, our x then would be 33 sevenths. Likewise, for our y, our y is 2 minus 3t. And uh, if we were really quickly going to plug in a 3 sevenths right here, this would be a minus 9 sevenths. And this is 14 sevenths. It looks like we should have 5 sevenths. Uh, so they'd say, what point do you cross the xy uh, plane? Well, your x was 33 over 7. Your y is 5 sevenths. And of course, z is 0. All right. So this is why a lot of times it's easier to use that parametric form of a line. Uh, let's take a look at the back side real quickly. Uh, note if we only wanted a line segment, if we didn't want uh, a line to go on uh, forever in two directions, and if we're defining it parametrically, that's with t by the way, that's what we just did a moment ago, you could very simply restrict t values, say between 0 and 1, you'd have a definite starting point on the line and a definite ending point on the line. And hence, you'd get a uh, nice segment. Let's take a look at example 3. For example 3, it says, show that these two lines in space, notice they are defined parametrically, and we do use parametrics a lot, are what we call skew lines. And what does skew mean? Well, skew really means that your two lines, uh, they are not parallel, but they do not intersect. Now, what that means is they do not intersect, but actually they cannot fit on a flat surface together. Uh, so, first of all, if we were to look at the uh, direction vectors, remember that uh, in general, you know, as we're writing out uh, the equation of a line. We can write, you know, x equals x naught plus a t and so forth. This coefficient of t tells us the direction vector. So for line 1, you can see we'd have a 1, a 3, and a negative 1. That would be the direction vector of line 1. Uh, as we're looking at uh, this next one, look at the coefficients. This is really like 0 plus 2s, by the way. We're using a different variable uh, for our parameter. We don't use t here. We're using an s. Uh, that's fine. You can use whatever letter you'd like. That's a 2. Here you have a 1 in front, and then you have a 4. And uh, these direction vectors are not scalar multiples. And you might think, what does that mean? Well, what we're saying is when you're looking right here with 1, going from 1 to 2, you'd say, oh, double your x-coordinate. But look, if I double my y, I don't get a 6. Uh, so these vectors are not just a you know, different uh, forms just multiplying a constant from the one to the other. So what does that mean? Therefore, they're not parallel. They're not parallel. Parallel vectors must be scalar multiples. Second of all, though, the bigger question that we have to address is, do these lines actually intersect? We're going to have to pick up with the second part of the video 
to uh, investigate that question. And we'll do that in just a moment. 